remember that in TNL Muslim dialogue, and that is what Bishop Josiah was, trying, was pointing out, that there are Muslims who are engaging with Islamists, and they are even paying a very high price. And some of them will hear from, hopefully from Nicole tomorrow, that there's an internal discourse within Islam that is going on. And I had a Muslim speaker in my school director, and he was saying that Christians need to know that and respect that. There's a strong and a vigorous debate within Islam that we don't know of. And that is September 11 and 7 7 has caused Muslims to open their eyes that they need to rise up and wrestle that and their faith in the hands of Islam. So that's going on. I'll answer the other question. Yeah. Um, the failure of the state, uh, of states in Africa, and all this uh, radicalization of Islam. I don't think I, I could agree any less with Father uh, Kuka. Uh, by the time you look at some of these movements, especially on this continent of Africa, uh, you will discover that uh, most of the younger people who wear the, uh, uh, the, the uniform of uh, being uh, Islamists, all they are looking for is, look, this state has failed, and we have to survive. If being violent in the name of Islam uh, will put food on the table, a lot of them will go for it. And we have examples in my own country. I have refrained from uh, giving examples from my country because uh, uh, Father Kuka is going to uh, speak to us. So I really, I totally agree with you. It's got to do. I mean, if states were meeting the needs of the people, uh, electricity, water, jobs for jobs. graduates. You know, you have graduates, a huge army of graduates all over Africa. There are no jobs for them. Well, they have to look for a way of, uh, uh, of survival. So I agree with uh, Father Kuka. Now, co-ownership of this country, I think that was a comment. But the question is, how do we reach these leaders? In our own country, Nigeria, uh, the Muslims have a very good network. Members of the Houses of Assembly, they listen to their religious leaders. They meet before the, before the real meeting, that is the real meeting. What goes on in the Houses of Assemblies? Works uh, too much. I mean, it's, it's nothing. They actually meet and they take decisions. Unfortunately, the Christian community in my country, I cannot speak for other parts of Africa, we don't have that. Our politicians don't even have respect for us. Uh, sorry, that's how it is. Uh, the, 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 the Roman Catholics, they have, at least their members listen, but Anglican, you know, God help you if anybody listens to you. So we, we have a big problem, and I think I'll be very interested in some of the ideas from, uh, from us. Now, question number four. Non-Islamist, is there a difference between Islam and non, uh, between Islamism and non, I think there is, a, I believe there is a difference. I know historically what we Christians do is to say what well, they did it before. And what comes to my mind often is this, as uh, um, uh, Gandhi said, you cannot shake hands with a clenched fist. If, uh, we need to trust people. And I know those of us who have actually suffered, especially from the northern parts of Nigeria, it's difficult, but we must move on. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, embarrass uh, his grace. Uh, the last three years in Nigeria, uh, that period has shown us what is possible if we are open and we show some trust. And what is religion, what is Christianity all about? It's about trust. When somebody says, I love you, I mean, the Bible says love believes everything. Let him betray that confidence. So uh, I, I believe there is a difference, and I have seen it. If I say here that in my ministry of building bridges between Christians and Muslims. I have received two major threats since 2000 
to today, and the two threats came from evangelicals like myself. One, I was actually going to be assassinated. And they said, we will kill him and tell the world that Muslims killed him. Oh, oh yes. And just last Friday I was saying to the Archbishop, I got a phone call, calling my name twice. Your life is in danger, we warn you. So, I mean, so what are we talking about? So, Muslims themselves can say, well, there are Christians, <laughs> and there are Christians. <laughs> and I can say that from my own experience, in my own country. Uh, concept of renewal, I think that's a very good concept. And I, I, I would want us, as Christians who are engaged in Christian-Muslim relations, to make Africa a better place, to make Nigeria a better place, I think we need to, to, to talk of this and actually put it to our Muslim neighbors. Do people have any, any doctrine of uh, just asking for forgiveness? Or you say, well, that was then. That was what Allah wanted me to do and I did it. So it is in the hands of Allah. I like that concept and I think we can pursue it further. Prayer and politics. You see, uh, when, this is the problem. Uh, when you pick something out of context, uh, you have a problem. What I've said is that our governments must encourage secular education at a high level. <clears throat> when people are educated, they see religion as a way of life. It I mean, as we were told yesterday, uh, and this is my own thesis in my, in, my, in my research, it is what you believe that informs your worldview, and that guides your attitude. That is the point I'm making. Uh, we must stop politicizing this relationship between God and yourself and your neighbor. Let the fire. Thank you. Now, another five. Chris. One, two, two, three, four. You have heard we have uh, my brother. <laughs> uh, uh, I was begging those who have spoken several times to try and restrain themselves. I made room for those who have not spoken today. No, Is there anybody who I have not spoken today? All of you have spoken today. I, I have not spoken. Uh, you are not, yes. Uh, okay, they have not spoken today, so you can speak. Thank you, thank you, Bishop, for the paper. I just wanted to look at uh, what, what I sat here during this whole time. I've been wondering, we are making clear analysis of the situation, but your paper came close to give us possible pro uh, uh, proposals of how to carry this way forward. I'm afraid that most of our analysis are being more the cognitive relationships. But we have not moved further to look at uh, issues that you have raised, which are quite helpful. I wanted, during that time, to give you a simple example about my work. In working with the Somalis, we, we've been working where at the cradle, really, of the thinking of the fundamental, fundamental groups that have been forming the Al Shabaab in Somali and through who, where resources have been going, even one of the Al Qaeda people I had to have a, a great, great interaction with. One area I have thought sometimes is not in discussion, but it's in the actions that we do take. We began a very, very high cost school and provided a need for the Somali community that they needed so badly. Uh, and that has become an attraction and in, in effect have provide, protected all Christians who are with us in that context, giving us freedom to operate which is not within, within the law. So when we think of religions and building bridges, I think we should take it a little further than uh, the dialogue into pouring and giving our lives being vulnerable in that context. It may be death, but it will be the breed that may be helpful to build bridges for the future. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you very much. Next. That's a comment, yes. 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 Yes.